Beautiful. So welcome everybody to another episode of Soma Life Sundays. This is a joint venture that was started with my friend Rob Scarpe. Actually, last Sunday he came to the uh, last summer he came to me and he said, I would like to do um, you know, a live Zoom show every week. And I said, That's a great idea. And you want to do it and sit on Sundays. I said, Great, we'll use the Soma, the Soma Life platform. So um, we've been meeting since the middle of September. We've um, had over 25 different guests who have joined us. And tonight we are blessed with one of my favorite people, my friend, Lynn Gerhardt. Lynn is somebody that I met um, a couple of years ago on Long Island when I was living in New York. And she is not only an extraordinary artist, she makes jewelry, this happens to be some of the jewelry that I was wearing today for Easter. Uh, she works with crystals. Um, she also, and she'll tell you more about her journey, she had an incredible, um, something opened up and she started doing beautiful artwork of people's higher selves and just some gorgeous connections. So I can't wait for you guys to meet her. Um, Lynn, thank you for being here, my love. Pleasure. And uh, today's Easter Sunday. I hope everybody had a beautiful Easter with family and friends, however it was that you got to celebrate. Joanne, who's here with us tonight, was actually down here in, uh, in Portsmouth, Virginia, visiting. And we had a delicious Sunday brunch with Eggs Benedict and, and champagne and uh, crinkly potatoes. It was, it was fun indulgence and uh, dessert. So that was really delightful. Um, I'm not sure where Rob is. Rob is usually my co-partner in this. He did call a couple hours ago and said he would be here, but Rob usually opens with um, one of the channeled writings that he does. So we'll just wait for him to be here. Um, Lloyd, would you like to do a little prayer of invocation for us? Uh, I'm not prepared to. <laughs> okay. Norbert, would you like to do something like that for us? Oh, yes. Um, okay. Just Most gracious you. spirit. We pray to become attuned to thy love, humbly given thanks for all the blessings of life. We ask that the light of Christ, thy son, may shed its rays all over the earth and be received into humble hearts everywhere. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Thank you so much. I I, I did have a stumbling block this morning. A stumbling block? Yeah. <laughs> I, I released God's message to the whole world, including my friend Mario, who made a video out of it. And I, as I was seeing the video, I, get, I gave him the text uh, of this morning's message. Mm -hmm. and, and the text had an incorrect uh, phrase in it. Okay. And it really embarrassed me and I had to write Mario back and tell him to, tell him to take it off of YouTube. Mm. Because the, the phrase read, death is eternal. I thought, wait a minute, that should read life is eternal. <laughs> so I had to take the I had to have him take the video down, and, and I sent him a new uh, a, a new mess a new rewrite, and, and I had to go back to my blog, edit the blog out, and I had to edit my posting in Facebook, which fortunately made the changes in the Soma Life group, and also the the, um, the other Soma Life um, the private group. And then I had to go to every place where I made changes in the the, um, the Mighty Networks platform, which included um, um, uh, the Soma Life pl uh, platform, yeah. my Mighty Networks platform, and also um, uh, Kale Morgan's platform. So I had to make that change in every single one of them just to get that corrected. <laughs> I listen, I, I know what it's like to make those errors. Um, it happens. 
It happened. It's all good, love. I th- I feel like every time I make a mistake with something, I learn a lesson. <laughs> you know, like it propels me forward. Um, so, Lynn, would you please, wherever this journey starts for us, for you, share with us your journey with spirit and what it's been like for you, how it's cultivated within you, how you've been sharing it with the world, because you're the stuff you do, I find extraordinary. Thank you. I, I was trying to think about how I would explain the progression, but it's been going on for so long. I can remember as a young child thinking that I must have been a geisha in a former life, but I was young. So, so much so that my mother cut her um, honeymoon robe to make me a geisha outfit for my Barbie doll. Wow. And I can remember sitting and staring at a candle and I was in grade school or just middle school, staring at the candle thinking that uh, I really should learn how to meditate, (laughs) which did not happen until many years later. But um, I started with TM probably in 1974 or 75. And that's, I still meditate that way every day. That's beautiful. Yeah, transcendental meditation, the mantras that they give you, really, I found that they've really helped with letting go of the mind. Right, really powerful. I mean, I had tried a lot of other things, but when I got my mantra and sat down, I could feel myself like levitating, going over backwards. And it was just such an experience. I said, well, just got to keep up with this. But um, there was, I have gone down a lot of different paths, trying to seek truth. And I keep what resonates and I let the rest go. What have been some of the favorite ones that you've gone down? I used to go to the Edgar Casey Center when I lived in Virginia. Oh, that's right. You were saying. Yeah. Joanne and I got to go there yesterday. It was really, really fun. Yeah. I haven't been in a lot of years, but I used to go there a lot. And just yoga and different um, different meditations. Mm-hmm. a lot of things it's been a lot of years i think i'm older than most people are have been meditating or on their journey so i've tried maybe more than they have but things really changed after my sister died and my best friend within a couple months one another Mm -hmm. and i was so upset that i wasn't invited to the party that they went to and I needed a reason to get out of bed in the morning. So luckily I had a grandson and I have to be creative. So Linny, if, if you're moving your hands, if your hands are touching anything, it's just giving some feedback. It's the cat. Oh, it's the cat. <laughs> so okay. funny. Stop. Um, and so... I started doing jewelry when I was in Florida Mm -hmm. because it was the easiest thing to go by the stones and sit and be peaceful and just get into something other than grief. And (laughs) this goes to Kat. Um, And it just was not something I expected to take off the way it did. I was immediately people were buying things that I made and that wasn't my intention. So it's something that I've worked with stones for so many years that my friend Joy, who is basically my mentor, um, has told me that she appreciates the combinations I come up with, with the stones Yeah, that I don't even understand. I just, it just comes and it just feels right to me. And if it doesn't, I take it apart and I redo it. But, uh, I think that's a really significant part of spirit is that when you trust what feels right inside of you, mm-hmm. something beautiful gets created out of it. Yeah. Yeah. But then the artwork came because my grandson and I do a lot of artwork together mm-hmm. and I've, I've not ever taken art classes. So this has just been something that every once in a while I get this bug and I'll do a certain kind of art, whether it's watercolors or pastels or something. 
And I feel, I've always felt like it's channeled because when I look at it later on, I don't, I don't remember that I did it. I just look at it and say, oh, that's really nice. Oh yeah, I did that. <laughs> and it's the same thing with the interiors that I've done for people because I was an interior designer for so long. When I'm invited back in, um, I, don't, I don't remember that I did it. It's, wow. it's very odd. And now I have COVID brain, so it's a little bit more interesting. So here's what was fascinating. I knew Lynn and I had purchased a lot of her jewelry, but one day she posts this on Facebook and I think you had three others and seven total yep there were seven total and I and I thought to myself oh my god those are the seven goddesses from the Sophia code that was the download of information I got and the Sophia code is a book that was channeled by a woman named Kaya Ra where she was visited by these seven goddesses Hathor Isis, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, Kuan Yin, White Buffalo Woman, and Green Tara. And I looked at these paintings and I was like, oh my God, you're painting the goddesses from the Sophia Code. And I remember I said to Lynn, would you please paint my higher self? And she's like, I've never done anything like that. And I'm like, well, let's see what happens. And <laughs> this is what came through this extraordinary piece of art. And I had been introduced to my higher self because I was doing these meditations to imagine your higher self coming and standing before you. And then you go and stand within your higher self. And I had been leading people through that meditation. And one day she introduced herself as Sahaniel. And my name, my spiritual name had always been Sahana Grace, but I loved that you caught the S that was in there. And then you told me that you worked with the, the you have these uh, pens that have crystal inside of them. And the sparkle that, pens, yeah. Yeah, sparkle pens. And one was um, Moldova, uh, no, no, no. One was um, lapis lazuli, peridot, garnet, and moonstone. And I, I just, I was so blown away by this. And you started doing it. So what was that journey like for you? You said that she had a definite personality to her. Which I found right. Really I told you from the get-go, she was very bossy. <laughs> so it, I had done the other seven and with no person in mind. These things just came out. Mm -hmm. When I started working with you, I just kept getting directions. And if I rethought it and said, no, I think I'd rather do this color right here. No, that's not the color I want. And it was just, it was very funny. And I was not allowed to put the pen down until you told me it was okay. Well, it was. Not... And I got messages of what stones to put. And wow, it just, that was the beginning of the journey. So I think I've done probably about at least 50, if not more of wow. these. That's and incredible. most of the people I don't even know. Yeah. So they'll, I'll tell them to send me a picture and I'll sit with the picture and it may take a day or two and I'll meditate with the vision in my mind. And I may get a message, but when I sit down and I start drawing, the message sometimes changes and it's totally different than the message I was thinking was coming through. So as I am, yeah, that's, that was a wild one because I had never drawn an animal before. Mm -hmm. And the bird was the first thing that came. That's Joanne. <laughs> yeah, and Joanne happens to be with us tonight. I mean, these are just some more of Lynn's incredible pieces. I don't know if you guys can see these. And like, I've, I've, I collect them. Every time I see a new one and capture it in my <laughs> phone, I am fascinated by your work. And do you remember who the... This one, her eyes are wide, were wide open. Right. Mm. Is that Sarah? No. No, I don't remember who that is. Sarah's I would know if you showed it to me. But um, And then this was Wendy's. Yes, that was Wendy's second one, though. Because Wendy, I was getting like a, a Mother Mary aura from her. Yes. So I did that. But in my mind, I kept seeing this goddess with this 
molded breastplate and it was in red with gold. And I kept laughing, thinking this is the most bizarre thing. I can't, I can't do this. And when I was finished with the first one, I was told just do it. And I did it. And Wendy so resonated with it. It was so funny. Yeah. So I learned sometimes I just have to go with what I'm told. And, and then I, you started getting messages with some of them too. Yes. Right? Well, I try to write the messages on the back. As I've allowed the messages to come through, they've gotten a lot more in depth. And I'm amazed at how many people resonate with what I write because I don't know them, you know. Yeah. So it's just a matter of me learning again how to trust spirit and just know that the me and I don't keep I don't keep the messages for myself. It's a message for them. It's a private message. Right. I write it on the back and send it off. But um, it's gorgeous. Some of the things have been really powerful. This was one that really blew me away because it was the first time that you did one for a man, right? For my friend Jean, mm -hmm. and I just thought that was amazing. Really, really amazing. So you said you've um, you've kind of changed between sometimes you're doing the art and then sometimes you'll go over to the jewelry and sometimes you'll go back to the art. We did an art painting class at your house that was magical. It's whatever spirit is telling me to do at the moment. I think because of COVID, a lot of people are um, redefining their spaces that they live in. So mm -hmm. I've had a couple of clients call me back to help them redo their houses, which takes up a whole lot of time. Wow. So I haven't even, what the, the blue man that I did was in Florida. Oh. I, had a I had time to do. So now, has any, has any more come of him than the image that you showed me? Um, I have gotten two more images, but I have not had the time to sit and work on them. So this extraordinary piece came through the other night for her. And if that's not an alien, I don't know what is. Hey, Anne-Marie. Yeah, I'm getting more galactic um, visions than I had previous, but I think that's because I don't, I don't have the time to really sit and do personal Science. ones for people. So the visions that are coming are just maybe what I need, you know? Have you ever done an animal? No. Yes, well, I guess I have because Debbie's son wanted me to do a raven for him, which came out different than Joanne's headpiece, but <laughs> it was it was very interesting. It was not the same kind of a connection for sure. But I I never know what's gonna what's gonna come out. Right. I, I think that, that that's what's so beautiful is that you're trusting your relationship with spirit mm -hmm. and, and you're trusting your intuition. It and takes a while, it really does, yeah. because I, I question all the time, unfortunately. And I'm learning more and more that I can't, I can't question, I just have to do. How long does it take you to do a painting? I could do one in eight hours or I could, take three days mm. and I never know what's going to go down you know I just my hand just picks up the color and the design comes there's no forethought of what I think it should look like or could look like or right but it is very interesting that looking at certain people's faces their whole their whole life is before you you can see the joys and the sorrows sometimes and a lot of past life stuff. It just wow. is very, it's amazing. And I think that if it, anybody sat and tried to do it and just allowed themselves, it's like automatic writing, you know, you just take pen to hand and go with it and see what happens. Well, as you know, because you guys did it. A lot of them. Um... A lot of times spirit will suggest when I'm working with clients and when I'm working with students that they take literally take pen to paper. And in fact, Rob Scarpa, our friend who does this sh show with us, 
um, he did a channeling training and I really, I watched your, uh, I watched your visual gift come open after the channeling training that yes. you had done with Wendy Gale. With Wendy, yep. And the same thing happened for Rob after he had done the training with Wendy. Everybody was tasked with giving messages and he went home and all of a sudden it just opened up, you know, and he's now done hundreds of messages in the past two years. Um, so you said you've done over 50 paintings. How, may, how much jewelry do you think you've made? Because I see your, your connection with spirit come through your jewelry. Your, your jewelry is like a work of art, especially with the different crystals you use. How many pieces do you think you've made? I, I, I couldn't even count. I really couldn't count. And that they, they've changed. I'm using smaller stones, but that have a, a really high vibration. Mm. So I just, I just love wearing them. <laughs> yeah, I love, I get I love wearing them. Oh my God. This morning, I, you made a beautiful long gold chain that had a pearl on it. And then it had a picture of, it was like a, a sketching of, it looked like uh, Mother Mary with the crown on it. Beautiful, beautiful piece. And I wore that this morning uh, when I was on the platform with these long dangle earrings um, that have the goddess on them. I, I just, I, I love wearing your stuff and I love wearing pearls. So given that these are crystals, Lenny, what stone is this again? I can Morganite. Remember. Morganite. And then there's a big piece of kyanite. Right, kyanite. Yep. And then there's a beautiful little heart. And then I'm, I, I like to be matchy matchy. So I'll buy a necklace from her and then I'll say, can I please get matching earrings? <laughs> because I love to have the set but every time I wear the jewelry that you've made that I purchased and I come to her house and we're just friends visiting and all of a sudden I always bring hundreds of dollars because I love <laughs> buying her stuff and I know Joanne's purchased a, a few pieces as well because it's just like you it talks to you you want it to go home with you yes and when I go and I sit in the room with the stones I, I don't come out of there for hours because I just don't even know where to start and I just have to touch all of them and see what kind of energy I'm getting. And do you, ever make, do you ever make a piece and think of a person while you're making it? Like it's meant uh, for them? Yeah. Well, I, I have people that ask me to do pieces for them. So mm -hmm. um, that's fun too, because it, you have to really figure out what their energy is. And the combination of the stones that I use has to, you know, blend with right really their energy with them um what is your what's your favorite uh piece to make is it a bracelet necklace earrings necklace definitely yeah 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 you make beautiful yeah. necklaces I've yeah, so seen... I made one recently that is um tanzanite um lavender jade lavender amethyst and citrine but small wow it is, it's magical. It oh. is really. Tanzanite is purple, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm sad that I live far away. <laughs> um, do you have a website? Do you have any of this stuff that's no. advertised? Do you, do you put it on your Instagram account? Do you, I, I, if I do it, I mostly, I put it on Instagram, but I, um, I have another friend in Cold Spring Harbor that has, um, a studio called Intuition, and she has a lot of my jewelry there. So wow. I sell it to her. I had it in some boutiques, but um, I'm not a really good businesswoman. I I like making it, so having to keep track of where it is. Sure. Or you need a business manager. I need a business manager <laughs> for sure. Oh, but that's great. You know what? So far, Spirit hasn't hasn't made that happen. So I'm just going with the flow of it. Well, I love what you do. Um, does anyone have any questions? Let's see. There's something in the chat. Uh, Anne-Marie, so good to see you, Anne-Marie. Does anyone have any questions for Lynn or about her gifts? I, and I'm tuning into a whole bunch of comments that we have over here on. Uh, well, hey, I bunch, if, I, if I may, I, I, Lynn, can you go back and, and, and go over again? You said that your sister passed away and your best friend. Mm -hmm. and you went into this grief cycle and when you came out of it, you had this creative 
vision for the jewelry. Is that what you said? Well, I started working on the jewelry because I needed something creative to do. And okay. when I was, my, I got my sister's house in Florida. So I spend time down there when I can. And so I can't bring all my art supplies and everything. The jewelry was the easiest thing to get started with. But as I, the more I did it, the more in tune to the crystal themselves that I got. And mm -hmm. I think that that helped in the grieving process. It helped me just in being around the stones and choosing certain things. It, it certainly helped a lot. But it also helped that when I came back up here, I forced myself to go out and go to the eyes of learning and go to intuition and do Kundalini yoga. And I met Lynn at one of the um, psychic fairs, I think. I think it was the psychic fair that, that Deborah LeMay and I had done when we had the Inspired Soul together at the beginning right. of 2019. Right. And, um, yeah, I, I was blessed by meeting some amazing people through that connection. Mm -hmm. And you were one of them. Yeah, I, I was, I was guided to go, you know, actually. So, um, and I feel very blessed because things just have opened up since then. And yeah. since working with you on different things, it's just been an amazing journey. Yeah, it's been really extraordinary. I, I just always expect something amazing coming out of you because your creativity is just really stunning. And the thing that I love about you too, Lenny, is that you're humble, um, you're gracious, and there's a kindness to you that's really, really endearing. Thank you. I don't take credit for my stuff because I know it's not me. I'm the conduit. I understand. It definitely comes from someplace else. Yeah. And, um, okay, there's someone online that's asking, how much and what size are the higher self portraits? What are you charging for them these days? Um, I'm still charging 155. And they oh, are oh, either not enough. I <laughs> always tell her. It's, it's I know you do. I was ready to say, are you charging 295 now? <laughs> <laughs> Which I think you should... they're works of art. Oh my God. Um, okay, so for $155, tonight's Soma Life Sunday specials. She'll be raising her prices soon to at least one ninety five. Uh, well, they, they can either be a ten by ten or um, I think it's eleven by fifteen. Okay. So they just would 11 need 11 to um, you know contact me on Facebook or Instagram and just send me pictures. Um, and they something. can find you. They can find you on. And I'll drop it in the. In yeah, the it's um, purpose. <laughs> Jewelry. Right. Right. And you're on Instagram. Okay. I'll drop that in here. Purposeful jewelry. And I've had people um, have me do, I've done several portraits of people's children as, that they've mm -hmm. given as gifts, which is really so cool. Lenny, is Purposeful is Jewelry a page or a group on Facebook? Um, it's a page at Purposeful Jewelry. Oh, no, it's not on Facebook. I'm sorry. It's only on um, Instagram. At, at Purposeful Jewelry on Instagram. Okay. Right. Thank God I've had millennials in my life. That's the only reason I know how to do this. <laughs> All right. Um, Instagram. Um, I know one of my favorite pieces is the, the pre-night one that you wore when this first channeling first started for you. And it's this huge piece. And I was like, I have to have that piece. And I put that thing on and I swear to God, it's like Anne-Marie, like light language starts flying out of me. The aliens are talking to me. It's uh, a really powerful stone. Perfect. And it doesn't, it's not something that people would look at and say, oh my God, that's so gorgeous. I have to have that. But the energy of that stone is so incredible and, but so gentle too. But it really puts you in touch with, an alternate universe you know yeah. it's 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 crazy powerful mm -hmm. um Anne marie hi rory welcome and hi lauren hi april um so she's on instagram and on that page not only does she have all the jewelry that she makes but she keeps um 
screenshots of the paintings that she's done. And they're just extraordinary. And it's so funny because there, there are some of them and I was always like, oh, who's this next person? Who's this next person? And I know that what started to happen was you were getting people that you didn't know. Yes. And that I think is even more amazing. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about how spirit communicates with you? Like someone sends you a picture or commissions you. Mm -hmm. How does the process work for you? Well, for a long time, I had quite a long list of, of people. So I would have to just maybe one a day, maybe three a week, because it takes a lot of energy. It really, um, it, it knocks you out if I do too much in a week. Um, but I just, I ask for spirit to give me messages. I just sit with the person. I sit with the energy that I'm getting and... I just start with um, an oval and two lines. So that's the mm -hmm. face and the neck. And then anything that happens after that is just guided. Wow. And the message when I get it, I, I either write it down on a piece of paper while I'm doing the drawing or at the end, I'll sit and look at the picture and then turn it over and write on the back the message that I've gotten. That's beautiful. And not all of the messages are real. It's sometimes it's hard because I don't know how the message is going to be received. And sometimes it's something that could possibly not be accepted well. So I try to be as gentle as I can, but it's it's spirit that's that's you know giving me the message. So I just connected you and Lloyd. Lloyd is extraordinary. I've seen this happen before, but when he connected with his higher self, his higher, his higher self turned out to be a woman. And so he was just saying that he would love to have you paint her portrait. So I just put you guys together on a text okay. message. That's great. why your phone is dinging. Okay, great. <laughs> um, it, does anybody have any questions? That, I, I mean, I'm fascinated. I could talk to you forever. Anybody have any questions that they would like to ask of Lynn while we have her here? Her gift is just extraordinary. I love how you use the golds in the art that you do. I think those colors are so beautiful. Yeah, I, have like I, said, I don't have training in art. So it was um, watercolors and these glittery pens and then this, the gold markers. Yeah. So it's really all kids' art materials, but they just tell such, they tell such a story to me. Right. Yeah. I, like, I love how this one has the feathers on it. Mm -hmm. Now that's my friend Joy. She's the one that I've worked with for so many years. Who's, she's like, um, she's like a grandmother, you know, a native grandmother. Uh-huh. Norbert, did uh, you Lynn, have a question? Yeah, I, I wanted to I wanted to ask Lynn because she mentioned uh galactic. Mm -hmm. And uh I mean this is so important that especially people listening to this 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 evening, because the Galactic Federation, you know, they have been you know talking to us for quite some time. And uh, to have received a picture, you know, of, or you drew it, mm -hmm. this is so fantastic. You know, it's mm -hmm. telling us that we are here and they are here. Yeah, right. You see, so it's, it's so beautiful. I would really love to see that picture again uh, sure, from Lynn. Me, yeah, I'll pull yeah. it up. Yeah. Robert, I have to say, the vision that I got, I, I told Lynn it was the best that I could do because I hadn't done anything like this before. But yes. actually, his head was much bigger. Yes. Um, and so I keep getting different visions and, and different colors. I've yes. had come, one come that is like a really pale gold with these really big dark eyes. And I just, it, they're in my dreams. And I, I can't get it on paper fast enough, you know. Yeah. But they but are, coming, are right? here. They are here. And yeah. the thing about it is our, our brother, my my brother Robert, who who actually um, who channels and uh, he does it 
so well. He's such an excellent, he's so excellent at it. Um, he channels the uh, people, you know, from the, the Federation. You know, there is the Galactic, Galactic Federation, Federation. Mm -hmm. the Federation, and he does a lot of channeling. So maybe you might, uh, if you haven't met him as yet, uh, maybe in the near future, you will, you will meet him. I would love him. to. I would oh, yes. To. Yes. So that's what I wanted to, I wanted to talk about this because when you said galactic, I thought, wow, this is so mm -hmm. well timed, you know. It's very nice, nice meeting you, Lynn. It's so nice. I love this group. It's just Sunday nights are a hard, that's usually a family day, so it's hard to tear away. Yeah. But I've, I've gotten so much from all of the people that have shared their stories. Yeah. This is, by the way, Rob and I are going to take a break over the summer. Um, and what we're, what we'd like to do is we're going to probably take a break for, we're, we've got people scheduled through the end of May. We're going to take um, June, July, and August off. And we're going to start in September again. And we're just going to invite everybody that's come and spoke and spoken to speak again. Because we've loved everybody that's been here. And every time we get off and we call each other right after, we're like, oh my God, they were great. I can't wait to have them back. So we're just going to, you know, have a little summer vacation. And uh, people tend to travel during the summers. and um, But it should be really fun. Amory, it's great to see you, my love. In a minute. Welcome, welcome. Um, Lynn, what is your daily spiritual practice? Mm, I try to meditate twice a day. Mm -hmm. How long? It's usually 20 minutes, okay. which is, you know, it's the TM mm -hmm. training, I guess, but it just works out that way. And so then once a day though? At least once a day. If I, if I can do it twice a day, I do. And I really, since I have had COVID, I, it's not that I feel like I have the long haul or total syndrome, but my energy level is really compromised. Oh, lovely. And I so, I'm so sorry, honey. Yeah, so I'm, sometimes I just have to sit and like today I did brunch at my son's house and came home and I had to meditate and take a nap because I was yeah. just wiped out. So yeah. um, I try to spend time outside and I say my prayers. Beautiful. Once in a while, I do light language. Gorgeous. It's for myself. <laughs> Gorgeous. Do you have um, paintings that are on a wait list for you right now? Are you open to taking some new clients? No, I can take some new people because I've taken a break for a bit. Okay. All right. I know Lloyd's up there at the top of that list. <laughs> for sure. Um, let's see. Anybody have any questions? You guys can raise your hand. You can unmute yourself. Let me see. Lynn, I'll ask another if I may. Of course, my love. Before the death of your sister, what was your spiritual connection and sort of source channeling or energy channeling a status then? Did you were you aware of it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So how how did it manifest before before? I still I still did pretty much the same stuff my sister and I used to go to Ireland a lot because we had such a such a connection to the land and this the my first trip there I laid on the ground and a beam of light screwed me to the ground it didn't come straight wow. down it had to screw me to the ground it was the most powerful experience I have ever had other than seeing Jesus but um Ever since sorry, then, can you can you go back to that and seeing Jesus? Could I, I, you know, it's like casually and seeing Jesus. <laughs> Could, can we talk about that for a moment? Hello. <laughs> uh, I think I was probably eighteen years old, and um, wow. so back in those days, people, you know, did funny things, and whatever I had done at the at that time, I can remember having this vision of going down a tunnel in a spiral and it was a bright light and I knew that Jesus was at the bottom of the tunnel 
And I was so petrified that if I came face to face with Jesus, it meant that I died. Mm. So I was resisting getting there. Yeah, of course. But I, you know, it was that again, another really powerful, but I was brought up, um, you know, in the Catholic religion and I was really not happy with that. So my idea of Jesus was so caught up in the church and the dogma that it wasn't something that I was looking for. So it, it sort of came out of nowhere. I was but told then, you fell asleep with your hands in the sign of the cross that you were going to die in your sleep. Oh yeah. You know, like the stuff they tell you when you're kids, like mm -hmm. crazy stuff. <laughs> well, that prayer. And if I die before I wake, I pray right. the Lord my soul to take that right. used to scare me. To of, course. of course. Of mm course. -hmm. I know. But so I, once my sister um, had gotten ill and we couldn't travel anymore, I went down and stayed with her in Florida for a year and a half before she passed. And um, it was, it was just a wonderful, hard thing to do. Yeah. And then six months later, my best friend who I called my soul sister, she passed from breast cancer also. Mm. So the journey's been interesting and I don't know if I would be where I am today if they were alive because you know yeah. you just you sometimes you have to hit bottom you have to go way deep down inside and feel the pain and find yourself and know that it's okay to be alone not that I'm alone but I certainly felt it at that point People are saying they're getting chills on Facebook listening to the story. Um, I know that Joanne's asking for very personal reasons. Yes, I do. Um, yeah. And uh, it's beautiful. Joanne and I were talking recently about her house and how she wants to get back to some of her hobbies. And, and, and she said, you know, I make jewelry. And I'm like, no, you don't. What do you mean you make jewelry? I've known you for a year. You haven't made anything. What do you, what do you mean you make jewelry? And she's like, no, I make jewelry. Uh, and I, I just, the, the, the first time I ever committed what I called a creative act was I made a charm bracelet and I had this silver bracelet and it had a Tiffany's heart on it and it was a gift. And then I just started buying charms. And over the years I have purchased all these charms and, and I have this whole charm bracelet. You know how you, I dip it in silver polish every once in a while too. And then I just hold it like this and all the little charms dangle and, you know, and I, Every charm is so significant to me, but I was like, my creativity is, I call myself stick figure girl because I can't draw, you know, not this lifetime anyway. So to me, making jewelry was fascinating. So meeting someone like you, Lynn, who had just this gorgeous, like spiritual creative expression was just mind blowing to me. So I've treasured the work you've done. And thank you for saying yes. I know it's, it wasn't your inclination to come on here. Like you weren't like, yeah, let's do this. But I just think you well, have I, a gift that's so profound. I l listen to other people and I just am in awe of their gifts and their connection yeah. to spirit and their channeling abilities. And mine is different, but- um, as, I, as important. Yeah, I have to accept that. I have two of the most stunning paintings. I, I'm very blessed that most of the art in my world is paintings that have been hand done that have been gifts to me or you know that have been made for me and i have two of the most beautiful paintings that are sitting in my office there are only three paintings in my office and you've done two of them <laughs> the one that you did of sahani ellen and the one that you did of hathor and i remember there was that whole thing of i asked you to do hathor and then it was isis and the whole thing about the right. paintings coming and going and the picture frames and all that so I just feel like you, you know, I have you in my home. And to me, that's an, you know, obviously I have them, but I have you and your artwork in my home and I wear your jewelry all the time. So you're precious to me and I, I love having you here. I did another piece. That's why I, I had asked you for you. Can I show you? Can I go get what I was going to send you? One second. For me? Yeah. Oh my God. 
I didn't know. <laughs> Listen, gifts are my first love language. I'm so excited right now. What is this? Can you see it? Oh, I, it's, I get the reflection. reflection of your face. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, my God, Lenny. That's so gorgeous. It's called The Colors of Love. So I don't know. It's all it's like all it's it's like all these colors. It's the yep. pink and the blues and the yellows and the greens. Oh my god. Honey. It's so different from anything that I've done. So I it just I love it. I absolutely love I, it. That's so. going right up here on the screen. <laughs> it's so it's funny. Yours. Lisa Fazio sees, you know, this whole thing and she's like, wait, when am I gonna paint you? <laughs> she sends me a contract and I'm like, okay, Lisa. And Lisa did this. She she took a couple photos of my eyes without contacts, without makeup, and she did this gorgeous painting. I mean, stunning painting of me that also hangs in my bedroom. And um, I just I I mean I love you guys so much. I think your creativity is stunning. Just really really thank you. Well, I appreciate your your feedback and your love and thank I, you. And I love referring people to you. I'm like. You have to get a painting from Lynn. You have to get a painting from Lynn and you get a painting and you get, <laughs> I, you know, and suddenly there were like tw 20 people that were like, we all want paintings. So gorgeous. So can so I ask one last question? You one last question. As, you know, as much as you want. As you want. <laughs> Lynn, I love that symbolism of you being screwed into the earth in Ireland. Uh -huh. And I notice a theme in your work, uh, especially obviously with the stones, the crystals, the connection to earth. What is your connection as you feel it to, to the earth, given that they gave you a pretty obvious example of right. being really right. connected? Well, another example would be one of the things we did at the psychic development class. Um, we had somebody come and meet us and they were to take us, I think it was to a tree and we were gonna walk into the tree and wherever spirit was gonna take us. Well. I, instead of getting take, instead of being taken up, up. to another you got taken realm, yeah. I was taken down into the earth wow. to the crystal caves. Wow. So I met the king of the crystal caves down oh, there and it wow. was God. just so perfect, so perfect, mm -hmm. so different. But um, yeah, I'm just really connected to the stones and the colors. Yeah. So I can go from the earth to being, I am a galactic being and I resonate with the colors out there and the stars and. Lenny, have you done anything more with that galactic, with the golden spiral in the third eye? Did you pay attention more? That's something I relate really well with the spiral. And that's something mm -hmm. that in Ireland, in ancient Ireland was a powerful symbol. Yeah. So and it's the choker ray for the Reiki symbol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. You know, it's it's the double helix. It's the it's you know the way that the cosmos are created. It's all in that swirl. Exactly. So gorgeous. Exactly. So so gorgeous. Is there any other questions? Another question I wanted to ask. Certainly. Yeah, I wanted to. Um, you know, I believe that you're Catholic, right? Excuse me? You, I said you're Catholic. Yes, I was brought up. You were brought up, like myself. Okay. And uh, I believe that uh, I'm listening to you about, um, you know, going through the tunnel and all of that. And you started to talk about you being a Catholic and the way it's felt and so on. We have to be so secret about all this stuff because... A lot of people, I feel, and it's true, they have to be re-educated because, you know, the way they were nurtured and the things they were taught and um, about the heaven and hell and they don't, they don't teach them about energy and, and so on. So I feel myself, like you, sometimes I do have a problem, you know. <laughs> and what I mean by that is you... You try to, you have to be very careful all the time. And uh, you have to, to watch. For instance, I don't mind saying that um, though I am a spiritualist, I am also a lecturer in my church. 
in the Catholic Church. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You see what I'm saying? So oh, some oh, people, wow. oh, oh, you know. <laughs> so I didn't know I'm that, like, Robert. Uh, wow. What's that? You didn't know I didn't that? Know. I didn't know my love. Yeah. I wow. am a lector. So the thing about it is I read with the priests and um, there are times, you know, you like this business of um, I'm, I'm unworthy. That's that's something that you hear quite a few times. And mm -hmm. you want to, it's like you want to, I never say that. I say I'm worthy, Father God. I'm worthy. Nobody hears it, but I say it secretly. So there's all this kind of stuff. And there are lots of people who are going through this the same thing that Lynn and myself are going through. And, and of course, I don't want to extend this thing because there's a lot of things that we can say um, that can be extended. But the thing about it is, I spoke about re-education. We have to be, all of us will be, because right now, I can say something here if you think about I am the vine and you are the branch. My father and I are one. When you see me, you see the father. Now, Jesus at the time, he spoke of the oneness, the oneness of all life. But at that time, they thought that he equated himself with the father. And of course, he blasphemed. That's the people in those times. And now we're into the situation of the Aquarian. We are right now in the Aquarian age where we, we reach that peak where we are going to see. And most people who didn't believe it, I'm afraid uh, the people who may check out too, because this is where we are right now, mm -hmm. where we are going to see the oneness. And this is what we want in the world. And we will experience that. So there are some people, especially priests, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do, because we used to think of God as over there, and we are here. So now it's the God self, you know. I mean, Jesus said it, and so many other um, great ascended masters said it too, but people, in, especially if we talk about the Bible, they actually teach what they want to teach. And they exclude the other things. Exactly. And I remember I, I wrote something on, on Facebook and my brother Lloyd said, yes, I am with Jesus. And everywhere I go, Jesus is with me. I was laughing so much because it's so funny, but yet true, mm -hmm. you know, because of that connection, you know, each one of us. So I just wanted to say this because I know there are lots of people in the Catholic Church you know, um, well, they were nurtured that way to believe in whatever. They were conditioned a certain way. And everybody now has to be re-educated or will have to be, whether they like it or not. Right. They will, they will have to be re-educated, make that, uh, that forward movement or stay where they are. Stay in the 3D level. One of the things sure. that, that many of us in this group here do is we study the Course in Miracles, which was when Jesus came back through and said, you need to retrain your minds because how your minds have been trained, not just the last 2000 years, but how it's been trained in the past hundred years, you know, through television, through so much of what's been done in the name of religion is a retraining of the mind so that we think in a different way, so that we think cohesively rather than separately. And that's exactly you know, the, the foundation of the work, certainly that I study and that I follow. And I think that that's what's going to finally bring us all together is when we can stop looking at another and seeing someone outside of us, but rather than yeah. we see a reflection of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's everything. Um, hey, Lynn, can I say something? Yeah, baby, of course. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. So I you. haven't been. Uh, I haven't had time to come on in a long, long time, and I'm so glad that I'm yeah. here today. I just want to say that there's so many synchronicities between the stories that I'm hearing with my own life that it's totally. There's there's a reason why I'm on here. Yeah, I was also raised very Catholic. I was actually cantor at St. Patrick's Cathedral 
Norbert. Wow. So I got you on that one. So, you know, my, my Catholic roots run really deep. You too, Lynn. Um, and I'm an artist also, and I've, I've seen your work because I've, I've been to, uh, Lynn's house and I'm so glad that I finally got to meet you and, and, uh, hear your story. Yeah. So I, I'd, I'd really, I'd really love to hear a little bit more about what you actually go through when you sit down and create a piece of artwork. I find that very fascinating that you say that I don't do any, that you don't do any of it. I find it very fascinating. I'm an artist as well. So it's like, uh, uh, and I love doing portraits. So <laughs> yeah, and mine are, I don't, I, if somebody asked me to do a, a real life portrait, I could never do it, but it's almost like, um, it's a Zen thing. Like doing washing dishes is a Zen thing. Mm -hmm. Sitting there, emptying my mind, just listening and seeing what feelings come through and all the detail work is just, it's very, very um, meditative to me. And you just let it flow. Mm -hmm. You don't think twice. You don't say, ah, I'd like to use a blue. You don't I say do, anything. But like I that. do think sometimes, and then I'm told, no, this is, <laughs> that's not it. Ah. I get the messages. And I, like you weren't here before with, I was talking about when I did Lynn's first, I said to her when I gave it to her, you, she was very bossy, you know? So, imagine. And that doesn't surprise you, I'm sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was her first commissioned painting. She came through with these seven gorgeous portraits and I'm like, oh my God, those are the seven goddesses from the Sophia Code. At least that's how they resonated for me. And I was like, could you do that? Could you paint my higher self? And she's like, I don't know, I'll try. And she came to me and she's like, she was really bossy. And I was like, what? <laughs> Hard to imagine. Um, hey, Deb, welcome, my love. It's great to see you. That's awesome. Hi, guys. I'm sh I'm so grateful that I made it. We uh, had to drive back to Queens to my home. Paintings. I have three of them. Yes. Herself, her mom, this. and her sister. Of course, mine is the most beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Actually, Lynn, Lynn, did you ever tell Lynn what my mom does with hers? Hey, no. Oh, so um, my mother has hers on a stand, right? And she has it on top of this wall unit and she actually speaks to her. <laughs> and she says that she speaks back, that the lips move, the eyes move. Oh, God. She, she becomes fully animated. I believe that. Yeah. Remember how you had a frame that you gave to me? I yes. ended up giving it to Deb and then Deb gave right. it to her mom so her mom could have the frame on okay. both sides. So there's glass on both sides so she can re read the description. Mm -hmm. Everybody was getting these descriptions and I went back to Lynn and I'm like, wait, is there a description for, for my painting? And she's like, nope, you got, you got what you got. You know, that's what happens when you're the inaugural. When you're, when you're the first one and I don't know what's going on. It would have been funny if I wrote it down, really. It yeah. would have been very funny. Well, it would have been do this, do that. I, believe me, I feel bossed around by Sahaniel, so I get it. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, I'm, I'm blessed and thankful to all of you who have reached out and had me do something because yeah. it has opened a part of me that I didn't know was there. Yeah, well, your, your gift is extraordinary. Uh, let's see if there's any other comments in here. Hi, hi, hi. All right, and Lloyd and, and Lynn, you're, you guys are connected. Lenny, thank you so much for being here. We will definitely love to have you come back. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for you. I love you. And um, I'm coming to town in April and I would love to be able to see if that's possible. Yes, yes. If you need a place to stay. Oh, you know, I have that guest room or the she shed, so. Yeah, I may, I may, <laughs> say, I may say yes. <laughs> Her guest rooms are made. My mother, of course, would kill me, but anyway. Mm. Um, uh, Deb and I are actually going to be doing Karuna Reiki Master Attunement with Terry Leone that weekend. Oh, how nice. And then I have a girl just in one day. And then I have a, I found out a bridal shower right afterwards. And then a bunch of us are going to get together for sushi in Huntington. So would love if you could join us. I would love to. Beloveds, thank you so much for being here. My love to all of you. It's always great. Rory, thank Rory, I think has been here for every single show, even the ones when Rob doesn't come. 
and uh, she's one of his sisters. Roy, you guys had eight or 10 in your family, some big, huge number, um, but she's representing the Scarpa clan tonight. So thank you all for being here, much love, and we will see you all next week. Happy Easter to everybody. Love you all. Love Happy you. Easter. Oh, thank you. Happy Love Easter. You Love to everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.